This video is to help prepare you for your next lab um, for percent yield and synthesis of alum. Synthesis, or a combination reaction, is a type of reaction where two or more reactants combine to form a single product. You might have started to learn this in lecture. Um, if not, it's coming very soon. Uh, what we're going to use as our reactant today, um, or next week, is aluminum foil. And we're going to turn aluminum foil into this compound called alum. And I'll show you what that is in a second. But we're also going to be working with potassium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. There's a series of reactions in your uh, lab manual, but it really boils down to this net ionic equation. So we're going to have uh, potassium ions in solution, okay, this AQ means in water, okay, dissolved in water, aluminum ions, sulfate ions, as well as some water, it's actually all dissolved in water, um, to make alum, that's what this is, this is alum, this S means it's a solid. So it's an insoluble compound in water. What's important to, to notice is that we have a one-to-one -one mole ratio of aluminum to alum. Okay, and that's going to be important later. So this, when there's not a coefficient there, it really implies that there's a one. See, there's, you have a 12 here, okay, and two here. These are coefficients. And when there's no coefficient, it means one. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, you know, one aluminum ion can make one alum molecule or formula unit. Okay. Percent yield is, is something that you're going to be uh, calculating. Now, if you think of all processes, any, any type of process, will have some loss in material along the way. So as long as you know, you're using equipment, um, you know, no matter how careful you are, some material is going to be retained on this equipment as you, as you transfer materials. Um, uh, we're going to be doing filtration. Uh, material can be lost on, on the filter paper. So, so our actual yield is not going to be as high as our theoretical yield. Now, what's theoretical yield? So if you're just doing the math, the maximum amount that you could make or, or you know, produce is your theoretical yield. We can express this as a percent, and, and we often do, and this is what you'll need to do uh, for this lab, is generate a percent yield, which is your actual yield divided by your theoretical yield times 100. So just as an analogy here, if, if, if you're making cookies and, and on the, uh, the package it says, you know, should make, you know, or, or will make three dozen cookies, you're th in theory, you should be able to make 36 cookies. Well, you know darn well that you didn't make 36 cookies when you made it. You count them up and there's, you only made 28. So this is your actual yield, which you actually made. This is, in theory, what you should have been able to make times 100%. So what was your percent yield here? Do the math. 28 divided by 36 times 100 is 78%. Okay. So what are your losses here? How could you make this, this number increase? Well, um, if, if you didn't have so many people eating the dough while you were trying to make your cookies, you could increase right, or have a higher percent yield. What's our theoretical yield for alum? Well, you'll be recording the, the mass that you start out with with a, of your aluminum foil. Okay? You can change grams into moles using the gram formula mass from the periodic table. Okay, this is from the periodic table. Remember that we have the, the 1 to 1 mole ratio in our equation of aluminum to alum. That's this step here. Okay, this is our stoichiometry. This is when we're on Mole Island, right? So we have we have a one-to-one -one ratio of aluminum to alum. So once we have moles of aluminum, we can change that to moles of alum. Once we have moles, we can go back, use our gram formula mass of alum. Okay, this is also from the periodic table. Grams per mole, gram formula mass. Now I want to point out here how I got this number, uh, this very large number, 474.32 grams. 
if you look at this, this is a hydrate, okay? So for every one of these, we have 12 waters associated with it. You have to add up all of this to get your gram formula mass. So one potassium, one aluminum, now this is a polyatomic ion. We have two of them, okay? We have two of them, so there are two sulfurs. How many oxygens here? Two times four, we have eight oxygens for, from this part. We also have 12 waters, so that means we have 24 hydrogens. And then another 12 oxygens. You have to add up the masses of all of these atoms to get your 474. So this is our theoretical yield of alum. If we start out with 0.91 grams of aluminum foil, we theoretically should be able to make 16.0 grams of, of alum. Of course, um, we always have losses, so it won't, it won't turn out to be 16, even if we start out with 0.91. But let's just say uh, our actual yield was 14.510 grams. Okay, so this is our actual. Recall that our percent yield is actual divided by theoretical times 100. So our actual yield divided by our theoretical times 100 is our percent yield, 90.7%. Okay. So up here I have decimal present, Pacific Ocean side, start counting at the first non-zero digit, one, two, three, three significant figures. So when I was done here, I had three significant figures. Three significant figures is my least uh, number of significant figures. This is a division and a multiplication, so that's what I'm going to be using, is three significant figures. All right. So let's move on to what you'll be doing. Now, you'll be working with potassium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. Both will burn you. Okay? You have to be very careful. If you did, do get it on your skin, you want to rinse it immediately and rinse it with lots of water. Don't just rinse it real quick and, and walk away. You have to really you know, rinse it off, especially the, the KOH. Just keep rinsing until it doesn't feel slippery anymore or, you know, it's you feel like it's, it's completely off your skin. If you get it on your clothing, um, you need to, uh, depending on how much it is, we're, we're going to have to notify your instructor to help you with that. If you spill it, um, notify your instructor and uh, we'll, we'll neutralize it before we, we clean it up. So be careful with these, please. Um, you're going to be going through the steps. I'm not going to go through every single step, but when you warm the aluminum and the potassium hydroxide, you'll be doing this uh, with a Bunsen burner, just like you used last week. Please heat it gently. Okay? You do not want this to boil. You do not want it to bubble all up. If it starts to boil, it will push the aluminum foil up on the sides of the beaker. Now recall, beaker, a beaker is one with the the sides like, like straight up and down, okay, vertical sides. Um, you, can, you can push the aluminum back down into the solution. Um, you know, if you get some up here, you can push it down, down with a glass stirring rod, um, and that's fine. And you want to dissolve all of the aluminum. So now we have our aluminum ions in there. You're going to be gravity filtering this into an Erlenmeyer flask, okay. And an Erlenmeyer flask has as the, uh, it looks like a little bit like, a, like an upside down, like a triangle here. So this is an Erlenmeyer flask. And this is nice. Um, it helps us mix materials. We can swirl materials in the Erlenmeyer flask uh, without fear of it splashing out. Okay, so, so that's why we want to filter it into the Erlenmeyer flask. And you'll be putting a, um, a funnel on here, just like this video shows you. So... Okay, so here you can see the apparatus is shown. We have a, a funnel, and you'll get a filter paper disc. You need to fold it in half, and then in half again, and tear just a small corner off that allows it to, to fit in the funnel um, properly. If you place it in there and let go, it'll just pop right back out. You need to moisten 
the filter paper so that it adheres to the um, to the funnel and makes a nice seal. You can pour your solution down the glass stirring rod and this helps to um, to make your liquid go right down into the center so that you don't you don't make a make a mess and it's, it's a nice controlled pour. You don't want to pour the liquid up over or higher than your filter paper because it will go up and over the filter paper and down behind it and, and it won't filter your material. And then you can give your give your filter paper a rinse, let that drain, okay? So this is filtration just by gravity. It just pulls it right down and, and takes the, the solid material out and your liquid material, your, your solution goes down through. So we'll go back to here. All right, so once you have your, your initial solution gravity filtered, you're going to move on to your next set of steps and um, you will, you'll be adding sulfuric acid at this point. You want to do this in the hood. Okay, so bring over your graduated cylinder, bring your, your flask, and um, bring your ice bath, your ice bath, sorry. So add your sulfuric acid in the hood, swirl it, you'll be generating heat, you'll be generating hydrogen gas, okay, and we want this, it is flammable, so we want to get rid of it. We don't want this building up into, in the, uh, in the room. Um, you shouldn't have any um, white solid remaining after swirling, but if you do, you can, you can at that point, bring it back to your, your desk and you can warm it just slightly, just a little bit warm, um, tiny bit of heat, and the, that white solid will, will dissolve in. Once it's completely clear, um, you're going to put it into an ice bath for the crystallization process. So this is when your alum is, is actually coming out and being formed and, and crystallizing. Okay. At the time that, that you are cooling your, your um, crystals and making your crystals, you also chill your wash solution, which is your alcohol water um, mixture. Now you might need a separate ice bath uh, if you can't fit your test tube or you know, whatever your vessel you're using to cool it in the same ice bath. That's okay. Then you'll use um, a technique called vacuum filtration. To separate your crystals from, from the solution. All right, so you take your, your crystals out of the bath, and this, is, this shows an aspirator, and you have this in your lab, and this is what we'll be using. Um, so it uses the force of the water to generate this vacuum, and you'll, you'll attach your hose to the side of your, your sidearm or vacuum flask, okay? So this is your sidearm flask, and this is made to withstand um, stand a vacuum. So this pulls the air out, and this is a Buchner funnel, or a vacuum um, filtration funnel. And you put a, um, a piece of filter paper down in here to cover up the holes. You can see the filter paper. And the, what they did before was wet this. And again, just like you wet the other filter paper, you do that with the Buchner funnel. Um, and it, it will draw the liquid right down in. You'll, you'll, it'll just draw that liquid right down in. And then you'll pour your crystals on it. It'll separate out the filtrate, and your crystals will remain up here on the, the filter paper, which is what you want to retain. Keep swirling. You can see how they're swirling and pouring and swirling and pouring because the, the crystals are continually um, settling down to the bottom. So you want to bring them up into the solution and pour, bring them up into the solution and pour. And then you'll use your wash solution to clean out the Erlenmeyer. And you want to get the maximum yield possible, um, and you'll, you'll have part of your grade is, will be, you know, this, this yield. So you want to get all those crystals out with your wash solution, and you'll be washing these crystals that are in the, in the funnel at the same time. You'll be washing all the, that uh, solvent down and any contaminants that are in there will be washed down. So you can see this washing step here as well. And then you can turn off the vacuum and put your crystals in like a beaker or on a watch glass. They will be uh, put into your drawer to dry overnight. So that concludes the video for this week's lab.